This Hong Kong style black pepper gravy is so rich and flavorful and especially delicious over a perfectly cooked steak. If you love black pepper, you're gonna love this. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. We love steak, but we no longer order steak when we go out because we can make the perfectly cooked steak at home. I buy most of my meat from the butcher. Because I don't go that often, I will buy enough to freeze. Steaks are one of those things that I will individually package and vacuum seal so that I can cook them straight from frozen using my sous vide device. So this is a Black Angus New York strip loin that we got from our favorite butcher. And we also enjoy ribeye and other strip loins but I find that when we can buy them and then freeze them, and then I can always have steak whenever I want, that's the game changer. If I'm not freezing them and I'm going to eat them on the same day or the day after, I will use my silicon stasher bag to cook the steaks in. And that will just save me on plastic use. So you haven't heard me say this in a while, but I believe in using the best tool for the job. Making perfectly cooked steaks is using my sous vide device to do just that. So with steak, if we wanted it to be medium rare, which is our perfectly cooked steak, using the sous vide device will give me medium rare from edge to edge. When I'm cooking it on a pan instead, I would get what is called banding. In the middle would be medium rare, but then it would be like um, more and more a gradient gray all the way to the edge because you need to heat up from the outside in. With a sous vide device, what happens is it cooks it for a longer period of time at the perfect temperature of what a medium rare is, and it will just slowly heat through at that temperature for medium rare. Dare I say those high-end restaurants are sous vide your steaks where you don't see, and they're just throwing it on the grill, putting those little pretty marks on top before they plate it for you. Because I am a kitchen gadget nerd, I love my Jewel, and it comes with an app where I can see exactly what I want to cook and to the right doneness. So I'm gonna choose just the basic steak, and I'm gonna set my temperature, and I'm gonna choose medium rare, and it shows me exactly what I want, like the right pinkness and the temperature that I'm cooking it at, and then I'll set the time. And I can choose from fresh or frozen, and the thickness of my steak, and then start. For my frozen one inch steak, it's gonna take an hour and 30 minutes. If it was fresh, it'd only take an hour. The only thing I did with my steak before I vacuum sealed them was I seasoned them with some salt, and that is all. If you want to season them with something else, you're more than welcome to do that, but I like to taste the flavor of the beef, so I don't add much. And we're making a delicious black pepper gravy to go on top, so it's gonna be amazing. Once your app tells you that the water is to the right temperature, just drop in your steaks and it will set the time and your steaks will be done in an hour and a half. And then meanwhile, you can make whatever else to go with your meal. While the steak is cooking, we are going to make our sauce. And I'm starting with one large shallot. And if you're not wanting to use shallot or you don't have shallot, you can use a quarter of a regular onion. And we're just gonna chop this up finely. So what, the shallot isn't measured in the uh, size of a thumb? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Wow, the cat has gone nutso today. She's got a lot to say today. She is super vocal. And four cloves of garlic. You can use as little or as much as you like. We're just gonna mince this up and you can use a garlic press if you like. I have time, so I'm just gonna chop it up.
So the star of the show is black peppercorn. And I am using about a teaspoon and a half maybe in here. You can use more or less, depending on how spicy you'd like it. And if you don't have a mortar pestle to crush the peppercorn, you can always just grind pepper. But we like the little chunks of peppercorn in the sauce. Oh, it smells so yummy. I know you can't wait to taste this, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Some heat for you? Yeah, it's a different kind of heat. It's not a heat that will kill me like the, the noodles. <laughs> All right. Done. All right, we also have a cup of beef broth. And if you don't have beef broth, you can use chicken broth. And if not, you can just use water. I'm adding a tablespoon of soy sauce. Half a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> One teaspoon of ketchup. <laughs> That's what's gonna give the tang in the sauce, and one teaspoon of sugar. I'm just stirring all this up together at the beginning so that it'll be easier when we make our gravy. Right, I am starting with a frying pan that I am going to heat up on medium heat. If you have cooked your steak on a frying pan, just use that pan. You don't have to start with a clean pan. In fact, if you've cooked your steak on the frying pan, all the bits and pieces from that steak will make your gravy even tastier. I'm adding two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna melt that. And then add our shallots. And we're gonna cook this down until it starts to brown and shrink in size. And that's when all the oniony shallot flavors will come out. You wanna stir it constantly so that it doesn't burn, but we do want it to have deep flavors. So the longer you cook it, the more mellow the onion will be and the more flavorful it will be. So it took about two minutes to get to this stage. I actually thought it was gonna take longer. But I did turn the heat down to a low. So I don't want the shallots to burn. I just want them to be browned. So my heat is still on low. I'm gonna add my garlic. And we're gonna let this cook for about 30 seconds just until you start to smell the garlic. And adding a tablespoon of flour. I'm gonna cook this for about a minute so that we cook the flour through and there won't be a, like a raw flour taste to it. Oh, I can't believe I missed that star ingredient. Okay, so before you put the flour in, put in the peppercorn. And if you don't do that before, you can still do it at this time when you remember, like me, it'll still be okay. I just got that waft of uh, the pepper mm. and the garlic. Mm -hmm. it smells so good. I know, it does. At some point, switch over to a whisk. And we're gonna whisk in our beef broth and other sauces. You wanna slowly add the broth so that it doesn't lump or 
I don't know what, I can't think of the word. Sorry, I'm just trying to focus on getting all the sauce in there. You don't want any clumps? Yeah, you want it to be smooth. So I just increased the heat up to a medium low. We're gonna let it simmer, let the ingredients kind of meld together. We want the sauce to thicken and reduce a little bit. So we're gonna let this simmer for about three to five minutes until, well, until you get the right consistency that you like. Okay, so once your steak is done, it looks super ugly, but look at all the juices. So you can use the, you can pour the juices into your gravy and stir that in. That would be extra yummy. And we are going to put this on paper towel just to dry it off. I didn't pour the liquid into the uh, gravy because I didn't want to mess with the consistency of the gravy. All right, so you want to pat dry your steak really well. And look at that, how ugly is that? But technically <laughs> cooked perfectly inside. Yes. <laughs> so at this point, you could throw it on the grill. That's when you, restaurants will get their nice grill marks on there. Or you can throw it in a frying pan and just sear it a minute on each side. But what we like to do is use our torch. So our torch uses the same butane canister as our butane stove. And we just want to brown the top so that it's a little bit crispy and appealing, right? Look at the difference between the torch side and the gray side. Check it out guys. The fat has been rendered because of the torching. And we like to torch because it makes a far less mess than when we pan sear. Even though it's just for a minute on the pan on each side, it's still just fat splattered everywhere. So we do find that this contains some of the mess and it smells so good. So let's cut into it and see if I can show you what we're talking about, the edge to edge medium rare. Okay, this is just fat. And we like to cut it thinly because we find that, you know, we don't eat a whole steak each anymore, but we can share two steaks between the four of us and we are more than satisfied. The kids have some leftovers for school and when we cut them this thin, they just pick what they want and they stop when they're full and they don't feel compelled, neither do we, to eat a whole entire steak. All right, so here we are in the middle and you can see that the pink is from edge to edge. You don't just get a little strip of medium rare in the middle. And it might look a little bit gray right now, but as soon as it starts to bloom, you'll be able to see that it's more red. So now that it only takes two steaks to feed our family of four, we save so much more and we can still have a really good steak dinner without having to pay steakhouse prices. Look at how much steak there is. Okay, and now for this sauce. Oh my goodness. And of course you can serve any extra sauce on the side to go with rice or whatever you're having with it. Well, for Chinese people it's usually rice. Or one of those noodle dishes that you have. Oh, you know, like spaghetti would go really well yeah. with this too. And just for a pop of color, I'm gonna add some green onions that I chopped up. Are you all ready for? Yes. Mmm, the taste. I am excited. Who doesn't get excited about a great piece of meat 
and a superbly flavorful sauce. All right, let's get into this. Oh yeah, great consistency in the sauce. The steak is perfectly cooked for us anyways. You guys, that's the freedom and the democracy of eating. You can cook your steak however you like it. You still want it uh, mooing? You can do that too. I don't like taking huge chunks of meat into, into a bite because the mouthfeel just feels like you're gnawing on this thing until I like to chew my food thoroughly. And if there's so much meat in uh, my mouth, I feel like I'm chewing all the flavor out before I can get it into, until I swallow it and it's not a great feeling. So anyways, oh, the steak is perfect, dependable, reliable, repeatable. That's what the sous vide gives us. The sauce is very reminiscent. Oh. <clears throat> The peppercorn gotcha. Snack up on me. It's a sneak attack. The sauce, mm, so much flavor, popping in flavor. The mouthfeel, the granularity of the, the pepper is still there because it was uh, ground in the mortar and pestle. And um, just the culmination of the garlic and the shallots. Oh man, this is so good. Great, thanks dude. Mm -hmm making your dollar stretch and having really delicious restaurant quality food at home, very easily made. Check out more Hong Kong style recipes. I'll see you over there.